Welcome guys, it is the SAK show brought to you by Mac Coffee and today's guest, generally we know guys doing this thing, but it's a female who is making headlines all over the world. Who is she? Find out. Welcome to the SAK show. Thank you so much for your love and support. So far, so good. Just want to say a big shout out to our sponsors, of course, Mac Coffee, The Wet Lounge, Bollywood Casino, and Royal Orchid Azuri. As for now, I've got the stunning Alicia. Alicia, welcome to the show. It's Thank nice you. to have you here. Thank you. And uh, fitness is all about, as I told you, <coughs> generally it's men who are into this, but <laughs> a lady into it, you had to be here. Absolutely. So tell us more about Alicia. Who is Alicia? Okay, so um, a little bit about me. I actually moved back to Nairobi f after 17 years. After 17 um, years, but you're born in Nairobi. I actually wasn't. I was born in BC. Okay. But I grew up here. I was here till I was about 12. 12. And then I moved away. I've been in Toronto for the last 10 years. Um, thought I would never move back home, but uh, I guess never say never because yeah. I've been back now for about 11 months. So tell me, fitness, this is what it's all about. You and fitness. Yes. What is fitness to you? Um, well, fitness to me is a lifestyle. I think that's the biggest issue with fitness um, is that people look at it as a very short-term thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we set goals where it's like, I want to lose five kilos in a week or two yeah. weeks. Unrealistic um, goals. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think fitness, we just need to change the mindset and make it a lifestyle. It's something that you need to be able to do for the rest of your life. So what's going to work? Um, so fad dieting, cutting carbs, you know, all these things that you hear in the news and in yeah. mainstream media is something that I'm, you know, really trying to change. Okay, and tell me now, fitness, bodybuilding, goes hand in hand or it's totally different? You know, there's different aspects of, of fitness. Um, people's interests are different, um, but also people's goals are different with their body. So yes, bodybuilding is a stream of fitness, but yeah. I wouldn't say it's the end all and be all. Um, there's a whole there's a bunch of different schools, so it kind of depends on people and what they're interested in. So where would you categorize yourself in? Um, well, I started off with sports when I was growing up, so I've always been quite sporty growing up. Um, Which sports in particular? I used to swim competitively, swim, okay. yeah. So that's what I did growing up. And then I was kind of into cardio for university and, all, and, mm -hmm. and the early years of my fitness career. Um, but recently I started bodybuilding, I'd say in the last three years, where I started competing as an international bikini okay. competitor. Um, now I've actually decided to kind of change my focus as well um, and I've started to incorporate more functional fitness. I wouldn't say I've always been blessed. Yeah. Um, when I went away for university in my first year I gained 20 yeah. pounds. Okay. Um, so that's when I kind of was like, okay, I need to get my butt in gear and, and okay. do something about this. Let's show them. This is what she was before. Yeah. And this is what she is now. So that's it. That's how she looks now, Alicia. Yeah. Tell us more. Um, so the pictures that you've seen have been my transformation to the stage. Um, so it is a bit of an extreme lifestyle when you're competing. You give up a lot. You give up your social life and you know your friends and family. And all the goodies to eat. Absolutely, <laughs> the diet is extremely yeah. strict. Yeah. Um, so I've kind of moved on from that phase of my life as well, which yeah. is why I'm here now, yeah. um, where I look at fitness as more of a holistic approach, um, something that's more attainable. I'm not going to compete for the rest of my life, um, and that's kind of what I share yeah. um, with my clients as well now. Bikini athlete. Yes. Is that the same as female bodybuilding or it's completely different? So it does fall under the bodybuilding federation. Yeah. Um, there's different categories. So yeah. there's the women's bodybuilding um, and then there's a figure category figure, okay. and then there's a bikini category. Okay, so there are actually three categories. There's three categories, females. absolutely. And it okay. basically differs um, mm -hmm. based on muscle mass. So for bikini, well, it's called bikini, you're kind of trying to attain that bikini body. Yeah. So it's you're not putting on too much muscle. Mm -hmm. um, you have to stay, you know, quite lean, quite lean yeah. but you're not trying to put on that much so muscle mass. Fat or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, close to about yeah. five to six percent yeah. body fat. Yeah. Um, whereas figure and, and women's bodybuilding is, you know, significantly more muscle mass. That and, you're this is, to and this is how she looks, guys, on the stage. So tell me, you've been into this, you know, I'm just trying to understand over here. What made you enter into the bodybuilding? The love of sports, yes, but what was the major drive to, to go into it? So for me, it was um, 
I actually had a personal trainer um, back in Toronto who used to compete. So I had initially gone to watch okay, a show. Was it a he or a she? It was a he. It was a he. Yeah. yeah. So he had explained to me that there's actually women who do this, and I, mm. you know, similar to yourself, I couldn't quite understand. Well, yeah, how does that yeah. work? So initially, I just went to watch a show, yeah. um, and and when I saw the bikini category, I said, you know, that's that's a goal that I, I'd want to set for myself and do this once. Yeah. Um, so it was basically just watching that show that I decided, let me set it as a goal. You know, at that point I'd actually just started working out. Uh -huh. um, and he said, you know what, I think you could be ready in eight weeks. Wow. So, eight weeks. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea what it would take. Yeah. Um, it was probably the hardest eight weeks of my life. But I so actually maintained all your trust into him and said, Absolutely. Yeah, do your stuff. yeah, you just tell me what I need to do and I yeah. will put in my 200%. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, it was tough, but I made it on stage. I actually ended up winning that show. And then the first place winners for all the different categories then compete for an overall title. Okay. So I compete. So because I won my category, I then went on for the overall and won um, the, the overall, overall title, title for that show wow. as well. So yeah. which titles do you have at the moment? So I. There's an open category and then a natural category. Okay. So there's two different streams for bodybuilding. Um, so in the open, there's performance enhan enhancement drugs that are allowed. Um, in natural, it's obviously a completely natural show. I'm a completely natural athlete, completely natural. but in the bikini category, you know, there's a lot of natural athletes that will still compete in open level shows. They're bigger shows typically. So in the natural stream, I have a regional overall title. Okay. Um, and I, in the open, I placed second. And then I went over to the provincial level um, where I placed third. And then I went to nationals where I placed fifth in Canada. Well, mm -hmm. well you've done you've done quite yeah, a lot. I yeah. mean, congratulations yeah, thank to you, you for that one. I'll be honest, my first show, it was absolutely worth it. You know, okay. I, I loved the experience, being on stage, presenting your hard work. It was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, kind of going on from there, it just became more of an addiction. Um, I started to realize I'm not actually enjoying the process. Okay. And you know, I'm not, I'm not enjoying training the way I used to because mm -hmm. along with training, I had a full-time job. See, my full-time job was not training at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so the lack of balance became yeah, quite yeah. challenging. Um, and that's why I'm kind of at the point where I am now, where I don't believe yeah, that you should, absolutely, don't do anything you don't love. Tell me, how stressful is it to actually stand in front of a million people in a bikini? And it's, it's not just, you know, it's different. When yeah. you're actually on the beach, it's different. Absolutely. But this is like now you're competing. Mm -hmm. It's a competition. And, and how stressful is that? I don't think that, I, you know, even if I continued to compete, it's not something I would ever fully be comfortable, comfortable with. Yeah. The thing is, y you kind of, you make it work, yeah. you know, but it's, it's stressful because you're in a bikini and then there's judges that are judges basically notice. looking yeah. at every yeah. muscle on your body yeah. Yeah. Um, that you've put in all this work yeah. and time for. Genetics plays a part as well. You know, some <laughs> people are genetically blessed in certain yeah. areas and yeah. others aren't. Yeah. So it, it is challenging, it's nerve wracking, but to be honest, being on stage, people love it. And yeah. I think that's why people continue to compete. So you, might, you just mentioned gen genetics, you know, I mean, uh, your parents, do they come and see you at your competition or your family and friends? No. How do they take yeah. all that? Uh, in Considering the you're from the Asian background. Absolutely. You know, there's this old school mentality. There is. Yeah. You know, my daughter is in a bikini yeah. on yeah. stage. Yeah. And in the beginning, you know, it was challenging to explain to my parents um, what, what I wanted to participate in, yeah. but they've always been open to experience and they've, you know, taught us well about values and they said, you know, if she's yeah. willing to compete, it's probably something yeah. that she knows yeah. is something we'll accept. So um, my dad actually flew to Canada to watch my wow, show. Awesome. Yeah. And it was after he was watching the show that he realized it is a sport, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. it's not just prancing not around. Exactly. exactly. It is a competitive sport and there's rules and, and there's kind of things that you're, the judges are there's looking a lot for. Which goes into it, Absolutely. You know? It's not just like flaunting it. Just exactly. Like that, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what are your plans like now? So in terms of competing, it's it's a wrap for me, you know, for now, especially. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really focusing on another goal that I have, which is why I've moved here, and that's my business. Yeah. Um, I've set up my own personal training studio. Awesome. Tell yeah. us more about it. So I just opened up about a month ago um, my own private personal training. It's a boutique studio out in Lavington um, where it's really focused on one-on-one -on -one personal okay. training. Um, and I think that's important because I think every client needs to be educated about their body and yeah. also training. Yeah. Um, so I'm really trying to bring principles 
that I found work well in the West yeah. over here okay. um, because I think that we still need to grow basically how so training is that, is that open for gents or ladies only it's both, both. it's okay. both for for ladies and gents Welcome to the SAK Show brought to you by Mac Coffee and Alicia Jamal is with us sharing with us uh, some uh, interesting mm -hmm. things about females, bodybuilding and all that stuff. I mean, I'll tell you, I'm up for it. It's, what you're doing is fantastic. Thank Seriously. you. It's, it's Thank good you. stuff and everybody should support this and encourage others as well to Absolutely. get involved into this. Now, you know, while we were discussing a couple of seconds ago and we we're talking about nutrition, mm -hmm. it's very, very crucial. As you said, you know, it goes hand in hand, but there are a lot of uh, nutrition myths, as we can say, you know, guys are like, I wouldn't do this or this will happen or right. if I do this and that will happen. Which are the your top five? Okay, so <laughs> I have a ton of these. Um, less is not more. So, not and, and what I mean by that is a lot of people think eating less will make them lose more and that's not the case. What actually happens when you're eating less is your metabolism is working at a slower level mm -hmm. because if you're under eating you're storing more fat. Your body thinks it's in starvation mode and actually mm -hmm. holds on to everything that you're eating. Whoa. That's why you want to eat more or at least eat what your body needs for the day um, so that you're constantly burning calories. So less is not more. Um, two. Is there only one approach to kind of reaching your goal in terms of nutrition? Absolutely not. No. You know, you got to take into consideration people's body types, what their goal is, a time frame, for example. So there's there's different approaches that work. You just have to yeah. find what works for you. Okay. So there isn't a one school of thought that's you know yeah. out out beats any other one. Um, three, fad diets do they work? Like crash diets. Uh, I mean, yes, they work for a very short period of time. The problem with them is after you get off and you start to eat like a normal human being, you will put like on, one. exactly, <laughs> it, probably worse than where you started. Um, the other two, you know, I always hear, do I have to cut out sugar completely from my diet to reach, a, to reach my goals? No, it's about balance. You know, if I tell you to cut out all carbs, all sugar, I mean, realistically, you may do it for a short period of time, but you need to find a way, like I said earlier, to make it work long, for a longer period of time. You don't need to cut anything out. Mm -hmm. It's about balance. You know, portion control, um, looking for other options that, you know, may have sugar in them, for example, but aren't so bad. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the fourth. And so yeah, a lot of people think, can I take a fat burner and you know live my life and lose mm. weight? Absolutely not. Supplements, it, I mean the word, word speaks for itself. It supplements something, right? So you need to be, absolutely, uh -huh. you need to be working out and you need to be eating clean mm -hmm. um, or eating right. And then you can you know, think about supplements. Don't think about supplements before you even start any form of a program because there's no so miracle. In simple words, there's no shortcut. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Unfortunately there isn't. All right, some cheeky questions for you. Can sure. you cook? Nope. No. I really can't I cook. I want to ask about eating because she's very clean. <laughs> yeah, so you don't cook? Nope. Okay. <laughs> you don't cook? Okay, meaning like I cook, but I don't think most people would be able to digest my food. I think it tastes okay because I'm so used to it, or but be I'd be afraid you, you should be asking yeah. somebody else. <laughs> what is the strangest thing anybody has ever told you? That weightlifting will make you look like a man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good one. What's the best compliment you've ever received? The best compliment? I know there must be many, but just one which stood out. I think someone once told me that my energy is the first thing that attracted me to them, and I think that was probably, it was nothing physical, it was simply based on the aura that I put out, and I thought that was... Good. Yeah. Which animal do you identify with? Dogs. Why? Because I think that dogs are very loyal. They're probably the most loyal animal, and I think that if I you know, whether it's friendship, family, or a relationship, I think loyalty is the one thing that I pride myself on. Have you ever been in a brawl with a man? Yes. What happened? That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Poor well, guy, man. <laughs> um, 
I didn't get physical, but you yeah. know, it was a comment that was made towards me that was disrespectful, and, and I'm the type of person that will always speak my mind, if especially in a situation where mm -hmm. I feel like as a woman I shouldn't be spoken to or, or treated in a certain way. Um, so no, it was not a physical brawl per okay. se, but uh, I did voice myself. And would you ever consider doing a very dangerous job? And which one would that be? Maybe a lion trainer or a professional thief? A professional thief, I'm not sure I'd be very good at because I don't think I can hide yeah. my face um, or my feelings very well. A lion trainer, I think. Or a stunt woman. I would, yeah, I'd love to, to be yeah. a stunt yeah. woman. I think it's the thrill and excitement uh -huh. of doing something that's so scary and so wrong in a sense. Yeah, I'd, so I'd the love most to do. adrenaline thing you've ever done in your life? Um, to be honest, it would have to be stepping on stage in a bikini for the first time. Yep. Okay, and uh, what is the biggest lie that you've ever said? And people actually believe that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the biggest lie that I've ever told. Yeah, and you got away with it, scot free. That's a great question. I mean, I've lied quite a bit in my life, but like when you have to lie. You know, there's those lies which you, you know you're lying, and the person even believes you, and people believe you, but deep inside it says, hey, I got you. I think, um, am I allowed to pass? No, right? <laughs> <laughs> a no. lie that I've told. Oh, I told a client of mine just quite recently that I have a supplement that she can continue to live the life that she lives and drink a lot and she will still lose weight and she actually fell for it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, See, less, anything for a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> less space, she's not watching. <laughs> okay, lastly, love or wealth and why? Love, absolutely. Um, I, I don't believe that money can bring you happiness. Mm -hmm. um, I think money is important and we all want it. But in the grand scheme of things, I think love literally conquers everything. So Great stuff. Yeah. You did pretty well. That's for you. Thank That's you. for our sponsor. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alicia. Thank you it's for having been, me. It's been awesome, you know, sharing Absolutely. all this thing. We wish you all the best. Thank you so and we'll much. come and check out your Please do. Yeah? Please do. All right. awesome. Keep yeah. watching, guys. It's the SAK Show. Like, share, subscribe. Do whatever you want. It's free. It's <laughs> online. It's in your face.